Hello guys and welcome for another New World video. Season 5 is coming with full speed and it's just a matter of days for us to get into the action. There is quite some excitement around the PvP scene and the PvP players as they will receive some cool new artifacts which will shake up the meta. Will that be a good or a bad thing is still early to say, but today I will share with you one of the builds with which I will go the full distance and I will play on 100%. Those of you who know me are aware that I have several builds which I'm using in wars and I rotate between them depending on the situation and the opponent. For those of you who are new to the channel and are not aware of the builds in question, I will name them really quickly. I play Firestaff Blunderbuss as a full AoE stat pattern row and I love to combine that with an anti-heal effects. My role with that build is to provide as much as possible anti-healing effects on the clumps happening around the point and of course to assist with high damage from the AoE of the Firestaff Blunderbuss combo. The second build that I play is a Firestaff Ice Gauntlet mainly used for a flex or dex group in a war scenario. The focus of those groups is to gain advantage and territory on the battlefield in order to give easier time for the point players and their healers. And last but not least, my third build for wars, which I rarely use but I'm still keeping it in a good shape, is the medium spear rapier build. This one I use when I have to be the front line of the so-called dex or flex groups and so far it worked wonders for me. So now, when I briefly went over the core war builds that I'm using, let's not waste more time and jump straight to the favorite one, which is the AoE StatPad Anti-Healer build. To start it off, let's take a look at the weapons needed for this one, as they are extremely important. Same as the previous season, we want to have the Pestilence on our back in order to provide the 15% disease whenever we apply the maximum of 3 stacks. Again, the last option for this artifact to choose from is to go with a gem socket, but this time I would use a rune glass ruby gem. For the fire staff, again the choice is either the name drop from the OPR crates called Commandant Fire Staff, or simply you can craft yourself the same version which provides keen play crits and alacritus punishment. For gem slots, I will go back to the basics and I will use a rune glass emerald. The type of the rune glass it's up to your personal choice, but keep in mind that two same types of rune glass on the weapons cannot stack. Some of you might know that the last season I was playing with splitting damage into nature due to the high fire protection run by most of the players in wars. However, due to the changes in season 5 and the shaked up meta with some of the new artifacts, I believe that there will be even more elemental type of damage and most of the people maybe will drop their fire protection. We also might see gemstone dust coming back in play due to the many elements which will be present on the battlefield. If we think about it, we can clearly see that muskets are currently running with void damage, bows are doing lightning or nature damage, fire staffs are burning their targets and don't forget the ice damage lovers. All that combined makes me think that most of the players might simply go for gemstone instead of fire protection potions and this is exactly the reason why I will go with the basics with full fire damage on that build. But enough for the weapons, let's take a look on the armor pieces as there will be the biggest change for that season. As you know, there is a new amazing artifact called Nature's Rat. This is a medium chest piece which provides 20% base damage increase but instead it consumes all of the conditional empower on yourself. With that info in mind, our goal should be to set up as much as possible passive empower so we can gain the most out of this chest. Since the artifact is a medium chest piece, it means that all other armor pieces have to be in light so let's take a quick look over the respective perks. For a hat piece I will go with Enchanted Ward, 
fire bow and fire harnessing. On the artifact for a last perk I will choose fire harnessing and this will be combined with the already fixed enchanted ward and refreshing. For gloves I will opt with pillar of fire, enchanted ward and fire harnessing. On the pants I will skip the shirking energy but instead will choose to go with another enchanted ward, play grenades and fire harnessing and last but not least for the boots I will take refreshing, enchanted ward and fire harnessing. In total for all pieces I should end up with 5 enchanted wards, 5 fire harnessings, 3 weapon perks and 2 refreshings. As always the aim is to get 4 refreshing perks in total for your mage gear, so having already 2 on your armor is making it easy for the jewelry. Of course you can also make a small adjustment and add an extra trust conditioning perk on the place of any of the two refreshings, but it would be ideal to keep the 4 out of 4. So with that in mind, let's take a look on the possibilities for the jewelries. Last season the best amulet for me was health, trust protection and shirking in power. However, as mentioned, shirking in power is conditional in power and it will not work with your artifact chess piece. There are few other choices that we can go from here and let's take a look on them. The first of course is to go back to the stamina recovery which most people still consider as the best perk, but you need to value correctly if you will need this specific perk on that specific row. The other perks that can be combined on that piece of jewelry are divine and empowered, but as you can imagine for this build, they will not have any value. Empowered would not give you anything simply because you cannot have conditioning in power and of course the divine is pretty useless for a mage as you are not the front line. Refreshing recovery would also not be the best choice to make as with the kit you have there is nothing to save you from enemies that already dropped your HP bar to under 50%. I personally believe that your second best choice to stamina recovery is simply to put refreshing as it will give you another piece of defensive perk on your armors and therefore you can use an extra trust conditioning. And now when we know the amulet let's take a look on the ring. Here the top priority of course is the fire damage which will replace the previous key and awareness. The reason for that is that fire damage will provide you with 7% passive empower which is necessary for us to hit the empower cap of 50%. Hearty is also a must have perk for the mage row so we already have set the stones for the two perks. For last perk the dispute will be between refreshing and mortal empower. As I mentioned on my last video, I couldn't test if Mortal Empower is affected by the Artifact Chess Piece passive. If the Empower stacks of the perk are not affected, you can simply go with it and if it does, then you can simply choose to play with Refreshing. Last but not least, for Earring you have the easy choice to make. The Empowering Toast from your Endless Thirst doesn't work anymore. So if you ask me, I would simply replace it with a regular earring. For perks, I would go with refreshing toast, refreshing and for last one, you can opt for nimble, fortifying toast or regenerating. Keep in mind that in light gear with low con, fortifying toast and regenerating don't have that much value. For gems in all those armors and jewelry pieces, I will go with 5 rune glass opals on my armors and of course 2 opals and 1 trust protection gem. Of course you can also go with 3 opals but keep in mind that having the extra trust against the spears and the bows would be beneficial. The skill tree for both weapons as you can imagine remains the same due to the fact that there were no changes to the abilities. For fire staff we are looking at the previous pillar, meteor and fireball combination with all the necessary passives to guarantee lower cooldowns and good mana management. For the blunderbuss, the same old same old double down build which includes netshot, shrapnel blast and of course the splitting grenades. 
Also, the focus is on the passives from the right side of the tree in order to open up the ultimate passive of Double Down. Heart Rune of Choice also doesn't change since our goal is the mass anti-heal and the best and only choice for that is the Biobomb. Make sure as well that you take the Cunning Upgrade path for it as the other two are reducing the effectiveness of the Plague. The Brutal form doesn't create a cloud no more, meaning that the anti-heal is only single target and the stalwart version is not applying the 30% disease but only 15%. And as always, it comes down to the last part of the guide and of course, this is the attributes and the correct split. Since I still need to test the waters, I will share with you two different splits depending on your enemies that you will be facing. The more offensive one again will be with 100 constitution, 25 dexterity for extra critical chance, 25 focus for extra cooldown reduction which leaves us with a total of 470 intelligence in case we use the highest tier of food. The safer option would be to go with 150 constitution, again the same values for dexterity and focus both on 25 and of course this will leave us with 420 intelligence. Note that in both splits we are completely skipping the strength bonuses. The main reason for that is that we don't use the attuned leather pants anymore which were providing us with so many extra attribute points. And with that guys I want to wish you good luck and a lot of fun on the battlefield of New World. I really hope that the build will work great for you and make sure to let me know how does it feel whenever you test it. As always, please subscribe to the channel if you like the content and make sure to follow me on Kick if you want to catch me live streaming. For those of you who like to discuss and theory craft things around New World, I will leave a link to my Discord community channel in the description below. Thank you guys once again and I will see you on the next one.